just about to do um, a reincarnation run. I've just done some videos today uh, where I've done reincarnation 8 and I've done reincarnation 8 Jockle, which is sort of hard mode. There is a big step up from 7 to 8 and basically the difference from reincarnation 7 to 8 is that each room, apart from just the health increases and the damage increase, um, just challenges in each room can really make or break a run. And on Reincarnation 8 Jockel, which is like hard mode, it's challenges in every room, plus the last act becomes really, <laughs> really berserk and hard, uh, depending upon RNG. Again, the challenges can become hard, but everything in that last act is empowered so if you're trying to make it to the end, uh, the boss isn't too bad, it really is the trash, you're just going to have uh, elites and things. So, just been burning through and I did a whole series of uh, playlists on beating Spiritual Assault on each hero and how to do that and I'm applying the same sort of thing across heroes now. I didn't record my first kills on the eights on each tune, each hero. So I'm just doing some tips and tricks because a lot of uh, streamers have left the game, I'm not really a streamer. But there wasn't a lot of updated information of people showing some of the heroes that you might not have played and how to play them or if you're trying to get that first reincarnation eight kill and i'm actually going to do a one i'll put some eights up later but um just the video shorter but the same principles to get one to eight are the same and if you want to see that this works on an eight kill you can have a look at the bunny uh, and i just did the monkey today but using the same same principles, the same weapons. We're using spores because it's the best Gemini in the game. And I'm showing you how to get spores early. Now to do that, we want to get spores on, and I'll, I'll talk about spores and how it works once I start playing the game. But you'll need to have that filled down to there to be able to etch before the second act or bef before the first boss or early second act because Gemini inscriptions don't naturally fall until the second boss and the third act so that's when you usually get them but on the harder content you know because spores just one shots everything on an eight as well um for the trash you really want to get it as early as possible to make yourself as powerful as possible that's just a bit of an intro i'll do the run as if it is an eight because you know it's it, it is the same choices i make same scrolls I'm looking for. The reason I'm doing just each one, the build you do will be different on each character, on each hero. I'll just show you that I'll have in the link pinned below. Um, I think it's the best builds by some, by Slight RNG. And we'll be choosing the um, top picks up there, first pick. And we're doing the unkillable leap build. Now, skills don't really scale well towards the end of the game, the last two acts on the higher difficulty. So we'll be doing that one. Do not choose the situational armor break build, which is like four down, um, because we will basically be choosing the second one, situational unkillable. We want to use our skills basically as defense, not as our main damage dealer. So I'll head back here and we'll get it going and I'll show you what I choose. So now Lone Wolf and I turn it on. I'll bounce that down to a one. Just did an eight. Um, Lone Wolf makes it harder as if you're doing two player. So you can read that there, but it is worth it because you get to choose an extra blessing at the start. And the blessing I think that makes things for every character easier for the whole run actually you'll have 50 percent of these stats at least by the end of the run but the first two acts when you're struggling you've got no ascensions you're scrambling for weapons you haven't got gemini weapons you'll often fall over in act one act two and this gives you the confidence to get you know the first two bosses down get some essence and into the third act really powerful so 300 percent weapon damage 300 percent skill damage um, what's really helpful is our leap is on 50% cooldown, so we can get two leaps in the same time, just base. Uh, we've got 50% movement speed, 50% max HP, and 50% max armor. 
Now, the only thing is with overconsumption, we've got to be selective on our scrolls. Every legendary, we reduce those stats by three, every rare one by two, and every normal by one. And that's not hard to do, especially for the benefits you get from that. Usually you can have three blessings, but we've already got four. And all of our skills hitting at 300% and weapons really mean that uh, when things are tough on an eight, and you can fall over, you're a bit of a glass cannon because they're sort of doing double damage to you and we can kill them quick, but they can also kill you if you start getting defences. But the bird is some really good defence. Uh, first choice we're looking for here is Craftsman's Inheritor. And if you have a look, there is a playlist, I said, to do spiritual assault on each hero and how to beat it consistently. You've got more control over that. You can force the weapons that you want to drop and you can force the same thing I'm choosing here, Spiritual Inheritor, and Gemini's will drop a minute into that if you use the loadout and the video will be uh, in the playlist on my channel. If I remember, I'll, I'll pin it on this for this particular bird. Very powerful actually, the bird, because its leap has great defense if we get those ascensions. Um, okay, so. There we got it. But if you didn't get it and you don't have much essence, I'm capped out. If you leave after a few rolls, you won't be actually charged for those three or four rolls. You only charge once you go through the door there. So just quit, come back in, quit, come back in. You usually get it after two or three tries if that doesn't turn up and you don't have essence to burn. But you're gonna get a thousand essence from a run anyway if it's an R1, somewhere around there. Well, you won't if you're spending along the way. That's actually the weapon we're looking for. We got it a bit early, if you actually want to get um, you know, your weapons with spores on the first boss, at least has to, both weapons have to be level 2. But we'll pick it up now, it's a good defensive weapon, and you'll see that it goes from 12 to 16.25. Uh, the multiplier is this right number, and the F number is that. And we can keep that for the, f for the whole run. The inscription doesn't matter, it's just these two numbers. And the only weapon we upgrade for spores and how spores works is in the main hand, we'll pretend we've got a good main hand there. We're looking for a very fast firing weapon that is firing at least a thousand projectiles within a hundred seconds. So we're looking for the Angelic Aura, which is the fastest firing submachine gun in the game. We're looking for really the Rainbow, which is, you know, like 11, 1200, depending upon what the inscriptions are. And again, the Radioactive Glove. And both of those are really good because they auto target one has an AOE where it just fans out to three enemies within six metres, that's the radioactive glove. But the rainbow can shoot through walls and that can be a really good uh, defensive until we get our ascensions together. But, you know, that's, that's sort of what we're heading for now. The heavy lifting's done by this. We'll never upgrade our main weapon. We'll always upgrade the uh, shotgun. Even if you don't, overconsumption's going to kill the first boss in a way, so... Whether we've got spores in our weapon or not, first boss is going down pretty easy. 300% weapon damage, you know. Just getting some ammo, I'd be doing that. Our cleave is really strong, like 1Q, because of the 300%, just nukes. Even on an 8, would do that. I said if I. I Going to start playing a new game, Returnal, coming out on Steam in two days. And so I'm just trying to get some quick videos up to complete the set, and then I'll do some eights later if I get time. Well, eights on the characters that I haven't recorded before. Okay. You don't need money in the game, that's the beauty of that first choice. Usually get the goblet first, but I want to talk about the build in a second, and the first two vaults are never hard. The third one always is. Usually get an elite that's pretty difficult in the third. And you can skip it if you're trying to just get your first. Because once you get spores, you'll melt every elite in every side room from there on. Yeah. Leap to get the shield back, that's why even without ascensions yet, it's really good. Uh, I don't care about that, but I want one scroll that is a dud. Uh, to hand over to a chat chest if it asks for an occult scroll and if I only click good ones I don't give any of them up. I'm just getting my secondaries here. Uh, okay, even the foundry is pretty powerful. 
um, you know, in the first few rooms. So we're going to talk builds in a second, but we're looking for things that give us um, defence. And I'm really going after the blue ones, which we haven't got here, and I'll, ex I'll explain the build in a second. And if you're looking at the other, other link, uh, we'll go through that early on. Uh, so when your armour breaks, gain 30% weapon damage, because that's really for the armour break one, rate of fire, and I don't want my armour to break. So we're just going to do that early on, that when we cleave, we get some armour back. It wasn't a great choice, but we're looking at these. So mainly the blue ones here, and um, this one reduces your leap cooldown. So this one has a synergy with, um, now usually you're going for the damage ones, I'm just looking at here. So that just uh, means that we can press our E more often and our E gets our armor back. So that's helpful for that reason. That's usually the build you'll go for if you're looking at the left. Um, but we want the one that says, if I leap, an enemy hits me less. So you can leap to a boss, you can leap to trash, and that's a good savior one. Um, this one's not bad either, that we recover armor. And the good regen hit is, even if you don't hit anything with that, you recover 100% armor, so that's a great defensive. So we're really looking for anything that gives us max shield, like an iron scud. And uh, you can see there, again, 100% max armor, 30% movement speed, which is really nice. Uh, just the way these blues get us our armor back. Now the one that we don't want to do is the armor breaking that when we leap um, consume we armor so do not choose that at any cost. We're really just using our stuff as defense so they're priority. Then second to that is just anything that gives us weapon damage like the red ones do often and we'll just do those um, along the way last stand things like that. So and we're not doing the cleave build, which is the ones on the right. Um, skills just don't scale well. They, they do well in the first rooms and the first act or two, but beyond that, on the hard difficulties, uh, I've watched lots and lots of videos, and I realise now that they're out of date because their skills are doing so little damage in the last rooms. And... Um, really good uh, scroll that we look for on this and I find that when I play the melee, oh we've got a shotgun, that's a bit early again, <laughs> it's level one, I want level two. But we've got vendors and that on the way through. They just don't scale well, I was watching one on the tiger, I was, just did uh, you know an eight on the tiger recently and watching the build and it looked all right at the start and it performed good in the first couple of acts but beyond that um, I was watching the same guy at the end do his lightning bolt and it wasn't touching anything and he had his ascensions by then uh, final judgments good it executes especially on bosses you get eight percent can save a run and other stuff's 15. Not that it's going to make a difference when we get spores. Oh, well, we'll on the bosses, but everything gets one shot, spores or not. Now we're hoping for a, a weapon. We got the rainbow. So it's level one again, getting a bit early. It's RNG when you get, you know, the craftsmen and the peddlers and what order, but you always get two craftsmen. And that, that means we only get to level, the weapon's got to be level five to get spores on it in act one which means you only can upgrade the weapon three times. So it only get up to four. But I'm gonna get that because it's a great defensive weapon. Um, you can see the multiplier on that is better than that. They're both too low, so I'm gonna get the better multiplier in case I you know, don't get anything better before Act 2. We will have it on the first Craftsman in Act 2. Uh, we'll do that. This is a great defensive weapon. You have to right click to break stuff. Did I check the, uh, just seeing what the enhanced does, chance 10 seconds can only be affected by. i do that because we might get the radioactive glove, which is another great injector. Best two injectors in the game. Only two weapons that auto aim to, and they're great spore appliers. Now, we'll do that one to split it. Getting our armor up a bit more. 
I'm reading about this is you can just shoot through walls. Great defensive weapon when we haven't really got our, you know, stuff up. Yeah, veteran I was saying before, I lost my thought, is uh, great for this. It seems to drop more on the melee early. Not always, but rarely drops on my range heroes. My main tune, I would say, is the bunny. And because it has great defense and great DPS, and it works really well with spores, something called Fatal Bloom, it works a bit like spores, just proccing all the time with a fast weapon. Okay, so we've got Iron Scud. Um, this one's not too bad, but we're going the Iron Scud because it's in our blue section. So when you leap, you gain 30% max armor. So, you know, we get a bit of crap happens. We just leap at something and our armor, which is 179, will go beyond that 179. Usually a peddler in here. These will be two by now. Uh, we'll do that for later. See, these are all two. That'll be all right as a spore planner. Just seeing what else there is. But we'll see. So you could collect a main weapon here, but the main thing is to get the shoddy happening because uh, there we are there, so we have to upgrade that. So that's level one, bummer. Bit of upgrade. This is a great weapon to clear this act and kill stuff before they even jump down there. It auto aimed to them, isn't it? Close. Very strong character, especially, uh, you know, I can display that if you have a look at the Spiritual Assault, that's neat. You just get hit and lose armor and you just leap. And this, if you've got it on like really small cooldown. You have to right click to shoot something like those barrels and to target crit spots on bosses. How this weapon works you can't do that with the glove where are you hiding behind there you can just shoot through it i didn't know how i didn't like this weapon at first because it doesn't perform real well you know, as well as other weapons until it gets spores but when it gets spores it will run shot everything it's gonna blow that up they will if i'm next to it Even on an 8, you're one shot once you get spores, everything in the second half. And the second boss will die in like 10 seconds. You can hear those guys chugging away. This auto aims them and explodes them. Just doing that for armor. So we have to get a main weapon. I'm gonna to have to get. I'm gonna to toss the Argus. Should I do that? It's a shame if we had the Argus on there, we could upgrade it. I'm hoping for one before the boss, so I need to choose a weapon for bossing it on this. But uh, we'll just risk it. We'll upgrade this to four. So if I etch that now. It won't put a Gemini on. It has to be five, unfortunately. In the first act, that is. But it'll get us through the first boss because of overconsumption and 300%. And we'll get it at the first craftsman in the next room. Uh, leap cooldown is really the main thing there. Not the cleave build, which are the yellows. I'm not saying they're not bad, but they just pitter out in the hard content and especially. You just shot fire through the wall there. But the main thing in this room is longbowmen are dangerous. So every time you lose your armor, just do a leap at something like that and get it back. And then when we get that upgraded, it really is powerful on bosses. So blues, we just want blues, except for the armor breaking blue. This room is, if it's the long room, is the hardest room in Act 1. Um, the long bowmen spawn everywhere. The shield guys aren't too bad. Uh, we can sort of 
cleave through them, which I'm out of. But we can shoot stuff up and down here. So I love how these weapons go through. So you just come up and then shoot stuff through the floor there. And you can circle strafe those and you'll get behind and they'll try to hit you like this, go around them. Wait till they just do that and then take them out. This is the hectic part, but if you come under, if you clear under here, I'll get an elite invasion fun. But you can just use the columns so that the long bone and they go, oh, but he's really dangerous, <laughs> gotta go away. And well, they hit by that, so we'll just leap. No, I didn't hit anything, you gotta hit, hit a person I forgot without the uh, attentions. So right click his head, so you crit, and don't get close because he nukes. Probably should, uh, yeah, he's down, okay. I usually get, I've, got, I've done a few one videos just to finish off a couple of classes before I play the new game. And I've just got alien invasion, I mean not alien invasions, um, elite invasions in these first rooms every, every run. It's so rare on an easier difficulty. And now we're good. It'll be boss after this. Yeah, on an eight, those long bowmen, like, one of those locks onto you, you're, you're done. Seba glass cannons. That's a really good one for us because now our shield's bumped up. You don't care about the health side. I got that as enhanced once and it doesn't take your health down, it just doubles your armor. I've never seen that before. It's OP, just a bit of money, I'll melt those. Because all of our regen and defenses for this, this hero are based on armor regen from our leap, uh, it just gives us easy regen and a big hit doesn't kill us. Just checking for a wish chest, I was gonna say there's one there. There usually is a wish, wish chest in this room, craftsman sometimes. Uh, search scroll, we got a bit of money. Phantom skin, great defensive one. I'll be happy with that early. So, it basically we have a stack every 10 seconds. See that number down there on the bottom left? Every 10 you'll see it go one, two, three. We have three stacks. That's three hits before actually armor starts going down. I should have got my goblet. Now this is the hard one, but yet get that elite. We just killed usually in the side room. So on an eight, you might or might not do it. So we'll bring down our leap cooldown. Uh, there, hey, uh, so we'll do that. So I'm gonna jump in here, but for the sake of it being one, I might jump out if it's gonna be something that takes too long. We lose one scroll on, maybe a web oh, it's too long, just for a scroll. And your beam here will just target those and activate them. You can use your skills, by the way. Your cleave and your leap won't activate them. Only weapon damage. But, you know, you have to shoot eventually. <laughs> one, it could be one really good scroll, but we just got one. So the main thing here is how to get spores earlier. Uh, we'll do that. Because we are using that a little bit. Now you could do that for our shoddy to get spores on temporary, but we're gonna keep what we got. We're looking for what else there is. Could use that for a main weapon, but we just got unlucky. It's the first one actually, out of all the tunes. Uh, buy some ammo, because money we don't need. So buy that and buy that. And that's skills, I'm not too worried about that. So what we can do here is we do one upgrade on that. Now we can etch. It's got a really good one here, uh, that 50, first 50% rate of fire. So we get high rate of fire, um, which will make that number go up to about 1500 rounds and 100 seconds when it procs. And what we'll do here is bump that up, which means as soon as we can get to the first craftsman in the first room, not always in the first room, but first, second or third room, um, then everything from there on just gets one shot 
but you hope it's in the first room on an eight because the challenges can get pretty difficult. If we get to that now, we'll just get another useless inscription. I didn't see what boss it is, but this is a good weapon for both. Uh, it's the one that jumps down, right click his face. Now I over consult because that's his crit spot. See yellow numbers even though I got it. And get out of there. Got good movement speed. He's going to jump up, stay on him, and then use your cleaves. It's going to be an exploding, guys. Uh, I just want to, don't want his shield to regen, so hold on. Just swap your weapons for a second and burn these at auto targets and really quickly. Just didn't want his shield to get recharged. Now, even without spores, he would have been dead before you know, five, ten seconds. Five seconds uh, with spores, but just leap out of the way. Get these exploding head guys out of the way. But overconsumption is meaning this weapon is performing much better three times its usual damage, even without spores. So you always get the first boss down regardless of spores on. It's the second act, whether you're doing Jockel or an eight run, that you really want to go into the second act with spores because you can get some pretty tricky... Uh... Oh, there we go. We got that, which is nice. That's a really good one. Now, even though they're level three, any weapon that drops here will be etched. You can put a Gemini straight on. As long as it's got four inscriptions, it will then put a, you know, the fifth will be the Gemini. So you could pick up that, and I normally would, but we've got our weapon for now. If I hadn't got anything better, don't ever do that. Um, <laughs> you know, especially as a, as a melee build. Now, and this one, really, to get a successful run, if you're really trying to get your first eight, <coughs> is fake death. Uh, we don't have that. So anything that doesn't hurt your defense, which that one does, because it, it actually lessens your primary skill cooldown. Um, well, it make, makes it make, get lucky shot and you get your skill cooldown, but don't choose anything that uh, hurts it or increases it. You could do that as well. You know, it just means that your E and your Q, but we're not relying on anything. Uh, we might do that and just get our defense down a bit for this run. But, you know, nothing great. And rate of fire, always over lucky shot. Now look in the room, there's the craftsman. Run to it. Okay, and now we can get that up to five. Notice everything's for free. You might not have the gut. We wouldn't have had the money to roll. And if, I've got 12 rolls as the worst I've ever gone on getting an um, etch. So 12 re-rolls. One, two, three. We got it. But yeah. If it's 12 rolls, that's 3,600 gold you don't have. Now everything, just one shots. And it's like that. If you have a look at my bunny that's already been put up, I haven't put up the uh, R8 I did on the monkey today, but it's the same. And these arsonists are brutal. Now you might get the challenge in this room. Um, you've got to crit them with the foundry, which means you have to get close and they're dotting around. It's very hard to do and you just fall over. Even with that, this early on, with 90% weapon damage removed, because it's uh, that's what it says on the on the prefix, it doesn't hurt. You can still just nuke them. Uh, that would be all right with a spore planner. It's fairly fast firing. It doesn't matter that we haven't got our inscriptions yet that we want. Just looking around and make sure I haven't missed anything. And in that we've got enough gold for the whole run, so it makes the run faster. He's immortal, so it's waiting for him to die. And movement speed, I want to get ostrich boots, I want to get uh, abnormal speed scroll, which is a normal and comes up more often than ostrich boots. And this is where we've got a chance if we didn't have a great, you could have used that temporary as a shoddy. It's got low projectile, low base damage compared to the other, the other's about 30% better. Uh, that would bump up to a 12, I think, if you picked it up. Uh, I've already got the bad one of that, I'll do that, and it'll drop the other scroll to normal. I've got something I can trade, I could trade that to a chest if it asks for it. So this, the run becomes fast, even starts to get really hard in the third act, uh, even if it's an R8. Now this room is usually pretty tough, the retainers, but the worst of this room is the arsonists. And, um, 
It can have like glaze for challenge. There's no challenge on the window on the right. We got an elite invasion. I mean, you can have that, and you've got snipers everywhere. You got arsonists coming for you. But having spores, it wouldn't wouldn't bother me at all. So learning to get spores early is what really made my run so much more successful. That's a good one, especially with that affix here. It means we're reloading less, we're getting our rate of fire proccing much more often. Chat chest over there. So we've got an option here of regen hit, recover 40% of your armor after hitting an enemy. And the third one of that is recover 100% of your armor. This is our main one, even if it does not hit an enemy. And it's great for bossing, so we're going to do that. So you've got to hit something to get your regen back on that one. But number three, uh, you can just bounce somewhere on it, away from the boss and you'll be sweet. I want to get movement, so I'm trying to get ostrich boots. I don't really want to lose. It doesn't mean you don't get, like, you know, the traps, which are really only in the first act that stun you. Uh, I might take that for defense, not using lightning, but it's the negative effects. So I'm now negative to the effects of lightning that sort of trap you and there is in the last act grenades that the fishermen do. Bump that up, we're gonna keep that for the entire run. That base damage will be over 500 by the time we kill the boss in the last act. It's gonna have four waves of monsters. This room, I, I did, did this on an eight on the monkey and um, a hard effect is you've gotta be within 12 meters or they take no damage. Or they take one damage beyond it or something. And that's really hard early on. Just so easy to die. We're going to get arsonists and bandits and uh, snipers, you know, retainers. But if they die quick, they don't even get their shots off, you know. So spores can just defensively save you, apart from killing. Just you know, he's in hands. He died before he could jump over the fence and spawn into the game. They always spawn here, so. Just looking at the red dots on the map to know where to go to. Those tornadoes really hurt. They can strip your whole armor in uh, a second or two if you get clipped by them. So getting spores is really important. And now what you're asking for in the run is you want to get some ascensions. So as we, it covers you for the first couple of acts, overconsumption and spores. And by that time you start to get, you know, your your ascensions together, you start to get some defensive scrolls like um, Feline Cat. These guys are usually dangerous, but you just circle straight them and they don't even get a chance to charge you. And they always charge where you just were, hence why movement speed is really important for survival. And we've got 50% straight up from um, overconsumption. That's the one you don't want to do, all or nothing. So. Just choose something that doesn't hurt or gives you weapon damage. 50% weapon in the next fight when I'm of course so a single shot or hatch. Let's just give this weapon damage. Doesn't really matter. I'll do the base because we'll, you know we're doing the leap every now and then when the oh crap happens. It's a little bit more damage. It does pitter out in the last act, but as long as it doesn't hurt. Now that's the one that we don't have immunity, which is the evil oh, banishing talisman. Don't ever choose those options. They can wreck a run when they give you a curse scroll. Just for the sake of the run, it's going to take too slow. It's not a hard room, uh, but I don't want to do, do that and slow the video down. Now, there is usually a vault here or a chat chest just here, so always check that corner. And sometimes over here, I might have missed it in the haste. There is something in there which there isn't. I always look at the mini map to make sure I haven't missed the peddlers and things. Yeah, it makes the run a lot quicker too. It's good for farming essence if you're still trying to get it out. R1s are easier, of course, than elites and nightmares. Simply because you still get a lot of essence by the end. And those a nightmare is much harder than one uh, reincarnation one to five. You just don't get those extra spiritual blessings along the way that's what i'm coming up for checking all the corners peddlers here before i go in i'm just going to bounce up this 
you don't realize this is doing all the heavy lifting this is just rate of fire like but the heavy hitting of the spores which stack to 30 explode are all done by the weapon we're not using it's going to have a leap which can be really tough by the way if you haven't got spores for this easy to die in this room on an eight you know can be brutal especially it's the guy with the shield and it often is this guy really does a lot of damage but he's not going to stay alive long enough to do it and we've got the snow boots now always want that and it often turns up that or the corrosive shard now the reason is that in the act three when it starts to get hard you've got cappers you've got um, octopuses that slow you and then that means that when you're slowed the other stuff can come in and kill you. You can get chained by sharks. And in the fourth act, anything with frost can slow, slow you. And it's death again. So I always wish for... The, I usually have that in the run by that time. Don't care about any of that. Um, stone skin, great survivability one. Just straight up 30% damage reduction. So feline cat's the best. You take 100% increased damage, but you won't lose more than for that well you'd have to drop that scroll if we got it because it's only health it's not uh, armor it applies to about 14 percent of your health which means it's like eight hits this is usually a really tough room without spores it's got um, snipers up there so you're just coming close to get them they died and then you get the bandits charging you but they die before they can and i went through that no i didn't and just shoot them through the thing and the music's gone quiet so I know they're gone. Now remember where your craftsmen are because if a better weapon does drop I always come back to it especially on the harder runs I mean we were all fine to go through Act 3 with the weapon we got but you know if something really drops with lucky shot and rate of fire the one that I like is 50% it's a blue 50% rate, rate of fire on killing enemy it only helps you on trashing but that means you've got uptime of that 100% uh, nothing there that's exciting we're looking for scrolls radioactive glove let's see what that's got because we've got craftsman just there it's got lots of lucky shot 70% don't forget if you've got your talent tree down we've got a base 25% lucky shot uh, that doesn't crit so the first one won't help us it would on the rainbow um, it ups from our 5% to 50 elemental damage upon hitting an enemy up to 500% resets on miss which it never does so we lose rate of fire for that um, I really keep the rate of fire just for the proccing of this but I can at least show you how it works I suppose no I'll do that because I can shoot through and make the run quicker but it's a good one I just I'll get it again later usually check up here there's sometimes it won't be because we did one back there but sometimes there's uh peddlers up there and sometimes up there there is a vault and sometimes up there a vault so check your entire room when you're doing the hard runs you need every scroll that you can yeah you, know, you can might get that stone skin on one of them and it can just make or break a run you know save your life this one you can get under and shoot stuff he's trying to charge through the pole and he can't you know just use your objects around you get up close and shoot them up here and they can't shoot back there's always a sniper up there where is he there's a red dot over there they can really hurt those guys if you don't one shot them of course but they can be pretty brutal if uh keep moving and they can't get you Okay, there's nothing like this there, no weapons that are important. Let's see what that was, okay. This next room's pretty brutal, it's tight, there's fire everywhere. And if you haven't got spores, you've got um, bandits that, that charge you. Robot hits the one shot you. But, and then you've got lots of snipers, the retainers, but you can get under here and kill them. You get under there and kill the snipers up there before moving into here and then just circle straight so they can't get you. 
It's a great defensive weapon is why I've kept this for the first act until we get some more. Until it starts heating up, you know. I'm treating it as an eight. It's still dying a one, as I said, with glass cannon. A really big hit could just nuke you. Uh, we're getting our stuff together here. So now we got Iron Scud, which means when you leap, gain 100% max armor and 30% movement speed. So I'll show you in a second. We're 344 armor then. And if I leap, it went up to 544, an extra 200 armor. It's a really nice buffer to do. And if we get the other one that actually does the regen, we get that we get 544 on one leap anywhere in the room so it's a really great defensive no other character has that sort of regen on their shields that this character does so we're just going to bump that up i'll just see if there's any scrolls here this is your last chance at a shoddy if you hadn't got one or that's not a bad spore main weapon uh, i'm going to do that just in case i get the radioactive glove that's a great weapon for bossing so we would have had plenty of other options by this stage. That would be all right as a temporary one. The base damage isn't as good, but it would go up to 17.5 as a projectile count. But we're going to hold out for these two. They scale better. So bounce that up. Now this boss, often on harder levels, will say they have diminishing returns or if you dash, you get hurt. But it wouldn't affect us because we can regen dash. and Right click his head, that's his crit spot. And he's going to go underground in a second, and we can nuke him underground. Still stays on him and kills him. The only weapon that can do that, by the way, the radioactive gloves don't go underground. Just because this one can shoot through the terrain. Okay then, so again, recover 100% of your armor of being hit by an enemy uh, with a leap. So that's pretty nice, as long as we hit. And three we're after, which will just make us invincible. It doesn't really, not worth losing 3% of our overconsumption. And this is where Gemini's usually drop. But you want to, you know, you saw how quickly we cleared this act. And if you look at my bunny doing that same act, it's just as fast. Just got to read the challenges a bit more. Now again, we want fake death if it's here. Which we didn't get it, uh, which is all right, because we're strong in a way. It just can make a run that if you make a mistake, trying to get that first one makes it possible um, you could do that just to re-roll it re-rolls everything but we get free Gemini re-rolls so we can get it back but you can get some you know right rate of fire we'll give that a go just got to remember to do that so I always forget when I get that now you come into the act you know if it's an eight you'll be killing just like this we'd like to get some scrolls that help us not there's Nargus which we don't need anymore Help us not reload so much, like MO regen. Deft Hands is a great one. Because on, on killing an enemy, you don't consume MO for two seconds and we're killing everything, bang, bang, bang. It means that uh, we basically don't reload. I miss an ink gun there, nope. Again, the inscriptions don't matter on the weapon, so the fact that we got a weapon from Act 1, that was in the starting chest, that one, doesn't matter what that is, just these numbers, which are uniform. They're always the same, pretty much. Bump it up. It's nice to get that one that says you have 33% of getting to rare scroll, an extra level at the Craftsman. I did that on the monkey and got that, and it was crazy. Okay, Elite Kappa appears. Just be aware that. Uh, you want to nuke him down quickly, <laughs> like a normal mob. Now these guys slow, but we got the snow boots, so we're not being slowed by that. Oh, we got this guy. What have we got? Okay, so the last one's doing nothing. Just reload speed and extends the magazine. We just got lucky shot. It's not bad for clearing because they've got a second beam. Still, it's not hugely better than that. So I'll stick to it. I wouldn't want rate of fire. Ah, oh, we could go back to the craftsman and re-roll it. Just want to make the run fast, to be honest. I would do that if it was an eight. 
you know, we've got that free reroll, we might get rate of fire and lucky shot or an elusive. Okay, we'll try that on the next. Uh, dangerous here are the trappers and the octopuses. And there is a peddler there that might have a scroll on it. I didn't do that uh, vault back then, just not wanting to slow the run down, just wanting to show you that Spores really owns and is the most superior Gemini. I have tried all the others. And watched, I think, every main streamer that was popular on the game try builds. Oh, what's this do there? Secondary capacity gets double and then shift to not to consume, which doesn't really matter too much for us. But we're going to replace it. We've got it already, so we might as well get the enhanced. But you might not do that if you're uh, tied on essence, and that's why you're doing this. Um, so recover 100% of your armor, that's the one I said. Now we've really got really great defense if this is an 8, that would complete our set because we got that one, which is the best defense. So we get max armor from our leap and we also get 100% back. So our, what have we got, 342, leap anywhere. If we had nothing, it would be straight back to 542. So that's what makes this so, def so brilliant. Whether or not you're using it as a melee class or a weapon, very strong defense. I don't know. There isn't another hero that has that. And there's a video of me doing spiritual assault. And you can just see, you know, on the boss of gluttony, I get hit by a hand, takes all my armor away, and then it's leap away, and I got it back. And I had the cooldown, the one that brings the cooldown of the leap down to, you know, very fast. So you are unkillable. And that's why that link on the screen that I've got says unkillable leap build because you become unkillable it really is powerful and if you get you know a veteran scroll where you just keep close and kill everything with your cleave and you get extra 200 health you know even again you, you're going to get an eight really easily sharks are the most dangerous here so just use terrain if you took it off you can just leap away this, uh, usually on an 8, will say everything that you kill can turn into a shark or a lantern. So just make sure you don't nuke everything. We're up to 328 base damage. Our spores are hitting harder every time as the, as the run's getting harder. We're getting stronger. He's invincible, so I'm getting away. I'll see in the side room just to show you the elites die just as quick. And I said, if you want to see, oh, well, this is a one, just have a look at the eights that I've got in the channel. It's just happening like this. I'm just going to pop in here. I'll get that later. Okay, this is going to have an elite. Just to show you that. Uh, usually you get in here, the lobster's pretty dangerous, the catfish is pretty dangerous. It'll be one of those two usually. No, you can get the cat in here too. Just getting my armor up. You can get like, use the box there, so the shark tries to get you and you just shoot it back to the box, you can't get his chain on you. And we've got... There's the elite there, he's got a frontal, so you just use the box. And so he tries to get you, but he goes wide because of the box. He does hurt though, if it hits you, yeah, big trouble. So we've got our leap cooldown now, which is nice. Um, you could do this one here, which is not too bad, but we're gonna just keep on our blues there. Right, look how quick our leap, and we've got full shield every time. And it's just up, cooldowns. So we've probably got the best ascensions for defense that there is. And now we're relying on our weapon. Oh, we've got abnormal speed, perfect. That's just straight up 30%. Oh, does that only work on shield? I realize not armor. I'm so used to getting it on other heroes. I didn't feel the speed then. Oh no, shield armor, I already got 30%, okay. So that's 90%. How much will overpower we lost? We're at 80% of the 300% weapon damage, so we're still like, got a lot of benefit from it. 
said be selective on your scrolls and you'll have like 60 70 percent of it at the end unless you really get lucky on scrolls and then hey it's pretty wonderful too uh, I don't need any of that radioactive glove let's see what we got here um, it's got spores on it already it's got 30 percent on leads of bosses not only that there's a reason why I want to swap from the rainbow here um, we're heading to the third boss now if you right click in the sweet spot there it will AOE to three nearby enemies within six meters the thing about this is it's got a really good range and it with the corrosion it slows so sharks are slowed it's really good for the fourth act defensively but coming up to the boss we're coming up to if it's the guy with the you know the ship and the cannons and the uh, the rainbow has to be swapped out for some other weapon but this will work because it doesn't auto target the cannons you have to actually right click each cannon you're going to die if you don't try to do that on an 8 or an 8 jockle ok we're just rushing through without doing the side rooms I would do them because I want defensive scrolls I want everything to, you know, DPS scrolls that increase weapon damage uh, really don't use it for damage there even though there um, so I'm gonna go five max armor for every enemy killed <laughs> we're killing enemies pretty quick see the armor going up every enemy killed it caps out so that's a really nice defensive lobsters here sharks and you want to make the lobsters a priority it's a really nice AOE, just clicking in the sweet spot, Captains. When the lobsters appear, which they will in a second, I'm going to rush in for them, because they can move here. There they are. I can hear those guys, though. Let me get them out of the way. Just leap towards that to get my shield up to 672. Look how it, the defense of this is just amazing. I might just do a straight eight after this and I'll put that up because it, you know, if I had this run, we would just destroy an eight. It's just, uh, you do need a bit of RNG for the ascensions and the weapon and the scrolls to come together on a jockle or something. That last room on a jockle is innumerable elites and that is just insane if you're doing it solo. Especially the guy that rides on, you know, he rides like a penguin or something and he moves so fast. He leaves fire behind and then you've got the guys that split into three and you can get three packs of them. So you've got nine snipers porting next to you. You can have a great run and then you fall over. It's a good weapon for the next, whatever boss is next, just getting that. See the range is really good, spin around and get that move away out of the red, it sucks your, sucks your armor now. Okay, we'll go back for the stuff that's back. Uh, we're not really playing the close game, but we're not doing a clear build, so maybe something's within 7 meters and we get 40% weapon on top of our 300 or 280 where it's up to. I'll just do that for quickly and that chat chest there. Be nice to get a good DPS scroll, like merciless combo or that's alright, we'll do that. As we go to reload that gets uh, better. Yeah, this is an easy room, that's right. We're getting pretty powerful now, and this will have um, an elite spawn. It's either four waves of trash, which is really easy for us. But an elite will jump down here in a second. Here he is, and we can slow it to get back a bit. It's usually a guy that does a frontal cleave, and we can slow him and nuke him before he can even get close. If you've got the, road, the other one, just kite him around here if you've got the rainbow. Because you have to be a bit closer to him. Um, so you know you hit something it's good for bossing straight up 
it fills our armour up, but for that duration, the boss is doing 50% less damage to us when we leap towards it. Uh, going to be using my leap on another character, I would choose that, but I'm going to use my leap for the movement on bosses more likely than my dash, because it's on such small cooldown. Uh, great one. Um, doesn't matter about that, that's actually bad for us, so we'll do that. That's why it's worth doing those side rooms, especially at the end, you tend to get the more legendary scrolls. I've noticed in the higher acts, tend to drop them more. Higher reincarnation runs, I mean. And the latter acts tend to drop the better scrolls. So we did have the serpent. If we did have the rainbow, it would have been all right for that. But if we didn't, what I do, because we've got plenty of money, so just find a fast firing weapon, because you're going to never get rid of your shoddy. So you bump that up. Just find something here that you can um, do. I'm going to do that because of the glove. We're playing the long game defensively. I'm going to do that for 20% lucky shot chance because we're doing elemental. Uh, there's nothing fast, but I mean, I'd even do that if I got stuck, but there'll be something usually. I'd do that one there. Uh, it's close range and the serpent's close and the... Uh, it's good enough and it's good good sort of spread. You don't have to be too accurate with it. So anything that, you know, it's got a decent fire rate on it. But we've got a decent weapon anyway. Got good defences, got good scrolls. Leap to get our armor, max armor up. And then jump. You have to sort of be close to him, mate. Just go out a bit. Just kill these, they slow you. Gonna get him. Dash, just. Just can leap all over the place here. You can leap out of those, it follows you. Just get our leap. We don't kill a man, jump. Burn him. Jump. Be in the middle between these. If you just keep leaping, because we've got such a quick cooldown now, you're unkillable. It's really good to show you how RNG can come together. So if you fail a run, don't get discouraged. Just come back and then you'll get the ascensions and or you'll get some scrolls and it just makes it good. Never choose that one. So we're going to go first three shots after reloading, which isn't really a lot. Just don't want to hurt um, our weapon damage. That would reduce our E a bit, but I'm not going to lose 3% over power. I would take it if I didn't get my ascensions that I've got. My leap is just like all the time. So now if you're doing Jockel and only on Jockel, not normal, not eight, you can actually trade in one of those three and you might get fake fake death at this point and I'd be trading in the craftsman's inheritor now because I've got all my stuff upgraded I've got plenty of gold to do it for the rest of the run and there's no limit on the scrolls so that's what I would trade if I was doing a job now the great thing about this it's the better weapon for the last act in the rainbow because you can slow everything and you can play really the long game most dangerous in here are the cavalry and the mountain guards. The stalkers, which are the, sh the snipers, these guys up there, they're not too dangerous because you can use the terrain so they can't shoot you. They're the guys with the frost. We do have the snow boots, they can't slow us, but they can drop you if you come around a corner unawares. I'm just going to rush over and get this upgraded. Remember that's there in case a weapon drops at this stage that we want, and then come back to it. I'm doing the refractive beam because they're bunched up a bit, but even if I don't do that, everything's dying so quick. Even without refracting, it's just jumping from one enemy to the next. I'm going to jump and get my armour up because I'm coming around a corner that might have those guys. I talked about the cavalry. Just slowing them down. The mountain guards, these guys. They can't get to you because of the cor corrosion that's on it. See the green on the top of their heads? That's the corrosion. The orange is the spores just nuking them. 
See the spore count, the number, because he was uh, invincible. Um, it's just hitting 30 so quickly. Yeah, they're slowing the monkeys. They're usually straight on you, those guys. Now, the difference if this is no, every room would say something that you have to read carefully. We're going to get the sources here. They put a shield on them. Don't rush in and die. If you can get it, good and well, but if you've got spores and some decent weapons, you're going to melt through the shield anyway. So just clear the melee in the back of the room, draw them out, burn through their shields and um, then kill, kill what you need. Gotta play the bird more, it is so powerful. Again, defensive, it's a nice one. Just jumping, you know, hitting someone. We're gonna get our max shield up. Okay, burning top is the last. This is the last section, so usually this is pretty berserk on an eight. And this is where the cavalry come up, so you wanna like slow them. And then the next section after we go through is there, the dangerous ones there. Look at the, as uh, you see, look at the red numbers, man. They're just destroying. That's the lucky shot chance. And that, there's three levels of lucky shot in the numbers. And we're getting reds, which mean we're getting like the highest lucky shot you can get. It's just, I don't want to see that. Wish I had this on an eight. This, this run, I should have done. Just want to do a quick video, because, you know, done a few today. Always that sorcerer is there. Just destroying this build today. Enhanced or not, they're going to die. I will do an 8 after this, it's, but it's RNG, you know. And this was just a really good run. This is the one that I'll, I really like at this stage of the game. It'll replace all normals, and that's pretty crappy. Uh, so I'm going to re redo the blue. It won't do my blues, but it'll turn that to maybe, I'm hoping, um, rate of fire. Uh, it's base damage on crits, which we don't do, so it's useless, but we already have a useless one. But sometimes you can turn an average weapon, I didn't kill something here, into something amazing. This is a really dangerous spot. Because it's usually on eight, uh, especially on Jockle, it's innumerable elites always. And it blocks you in here, so you don't have much room. And you've got elites chasing you and putting fire in, and you can't go over the fire, it's just crazy. Oops, I did that by accident. <laughs> oh, I forgot about the reroll. We roll all weapon inscriptions, but we've got too good on that, so I can't. I told you I always forget that one. And we just bump that up, that's what I meant to press. So those grenades sort of trap you. Wow, look at the lucky shot we got on this. Plus it must be that ascension we also got before. With lucky shot, it must be bouncing it up. We get one. I thought we did. Maybe not. Glaze barrier uh, means that they have to be hit first. But this is great for glaze barrier. It's powerful. Just getting our armor up. Okay, it's going to nuke it. Take a lot to get off it. Now they're dangerous again uh, because they can rush towards you until the barrier breaks, which takes one second. Well, not on a one, but you know, if it was an eight, I'd be. This room is just berserk on a jockey. And it really is a bit of RNG of how well you did the run and what defensive you got. So I'd be alright with this build, but if you didn't have what we did have, we'd be in trouble. Just looking for a scroll there once we burn that. The game's pause looking at stuff. I'm just trying to be quick. Got a rainbow, what have we got on it? 
I rate of fire on killing enemy, really good one. I just always like to look. That's good, 35% weapon damage straight up. Just charging to try to not end him, I don't want to be close. Just trying to slow him and keep him away if I was on that. There's stalkers up top, you can see their line when they're shooting. I'll just leap up for them and get them. this again a few times and just hope to get the same build because I did this one when I did my first kill which before I recorded there's a vault down there but I'm not not doing them for the for a one they're good to do for essence if you're trying to get your true skill out and it's the one I won't choose and it's boss time which we're going to destroy uh, good bossing weapon um, but I'm going to stick with what we got. What's it got? Lucky Shot Chance would get that up to 100 on the boss. It's got 30% weapon against elites. It's very nice. It's got minus 50% accuracy. I do not like that. That weapon already lifts really high. You want accuracy on that. Um, that's a jump one. What's the... Oh, I thought that was enhanced. Yeah, we're not doing that one. Okay, we just bounce it up and we burn the boss. Now that would work on an eight, and I'll, I'll put an eight up on this. It's just such a strong hero, this one, for survival. They gave you lots of survivability because the melee is vulnerable when you play the close game, but you don't have to play the close game if you're trying to get your first kill, you know. You can do the close game early, and then when it gets really tough, the weapons scale better in a way. Okay, we we'll bounce that up. What did we get up to? 500, I said we would do if you get your weapon early. You can get higher if we got it earlier in the first act. On Jockle, this boss is different. He does clones. I should leap just to get some uh, armor up. Just kill the canister. And just uh, leap to him, keep it up defensively. And I would have liked to get a couple of things I don't reload as much. Good movement speed. Now he's just going to have burn phase. And we're going to burn him so quick. Uh, we had another 50% before he hit Enrage. Let's just do the summary of the run. It looks like the dog's barking. I better go and let it out. What's that? Victory, I've already got victory. Oh, it's a second save I've got on this one. I did a whole save where I did the whole game solo. And I did the, the one on the other. Um, so we've got present stuff. We spent lots and we're still ahead for the next run. Just remind you have to have that unlocked. And I'll show you one more thing and that is, can't remember if I did it at the start. This spirit concentrator is the concentrator and there's a video in the channel about how to beat spiritual assault easier than we just did that one there because you can force your injector and your shotgun to drop every 50 enemies have a good day and or you know hope you, you get your first kill let me know if you do get it um, by using this method catch you later spores rocks